The Diary of Fate. Fate plays no favorites. It could happen to you. Book 54. Page 806. Yes, here it is. The life record of Victor Wakeman. An American citizen employed by the United States military government in Berlin. Yes, Victor, your position as a civilian interpreter with an intelligence unit offered you many opportunities. Opportunities to choose for good or evil. And now as the record of your life lies open before me, I, fate, look ahead to an instant of decision. I said stop. What? Who are you? That really doesn't matter. The point is that you're Captain Master. Yes. In the life of Victor Wakeman, a desperate decision was made. Then I, fate, intervened. And because of a little thing, because of a loose stone, Victor Wakeman will die. But listen well, you who hear my words. Fate is not vindictive, not without regard for mortal rights. In a moment, I will read again from the Diary of Fate. Before the exciting story of Victor Wakeman, here is our announcer. Victor Wakeman, an evil choice was made. But in the final analysis, it was the seemingly unimportant thing, the trifle, that brought about the ultimate conclusion. For little things are the tools with which I, fate, shape your destinies. Remember, Victor Wakeman, how it all started? You were talking with Colonel Bennett, chief of the intelligence unit to which you were assigned. And that's about it, Colonel. That's as far as I could get in one month's work, Frank. I see. You're still convinced the Heisler jewels are somewhere here in Berlin? Yes, sir. I am. Mr. Wakeman, we've got to find those jewels before the Nazis do. A half million dollars in their hands can cause us untold harm. Everything indicates that they were hidden in the Heisler home the night before Berlin fell. And they've never been moved. But we've been over every inch of that old house time and again. Ah, well. You know, it's going to be embarrassing if we don't find them soon. Embarrassing and dangerous. Exactly. Well, we'll just have to stay with it. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Bennett and I had your wife over for dinner while you were in Frankfurt. She, uh, seemed to have something on her mind. Well, Colonel, I... I'm afraid Marsh and I are both a little impatient. Impatient? You know the kind of work you're doing? Oh, no, sir. It's just, well, frankly, a civilian interpreter's pay is all right, but it's no fortune, and it's discouraging to Marsha when we can't afford it. I know, I know. Well, you're a young man. You have lots of time yet. Just be patient, my boy. Uh, incidentally, there there have been some changes while you were away. Our unit's been expanded. Twelve more officers, another section of whack type of small vehicles, and... uh, there's an opening for a higher rating in our civilian staff. An opening? Mm-hmm. Do Do you have anyone in mind, Colonel? Well, that rating could very well go to a man who was instrumental in the recovery of the Heisler jewels, Mr. Wakeman. Yes, Victor. The advancement you were so hungry for would be yours. If only you could locate the hidden jewel. You realized that the odds against you were enormous. But you were determined to find the jewels yourself. You neglected your regular duties, and without waiting for orders, drove to the Heisler home with the sergeant assigned to you. Then a little thing happened. Okay, Sergeant Camel. Park here with the fish pot. Yeah, the old Heisler joint again, eh? 
Why they give up, Miss Wakeman? We ever find those jewels now? It'll be just dumb luck. Sergeant Luck has very little to do with it. Hmm? It's methodical and scientific. Gather facts, analyze those facts, and derive a logical conclusion. Those jewels are here in this house. Okay, okay, I don't argue with you, but I've been going through these walls so often, I know these termites by the first name. And we're going to do it again. We'll start in the basement and sound every wall. Okay, Brock, I've already tell you there's nothing. Oh, blast it. Anyway. What's the matter? Drop my cigarette lighter down in the fish pot. You go on in, Sergeant. I'll be right with you. I'm going to get my lighter first. Okay, Mr. Wakeman. Oh, that's stupid. It would fall between these rocks. There now. What's this? What? Holy smoke. It's... It's the jewels. The Heisler jewels. Yes, Victor. Because of a little thing. Because you dropped your cigarette lighter. You had found the Heisler jewels. You concealed the leather pouch in its priceless content. Then you told Sergeant Camel you had changed your mind about the search. A few minutes later, anxious to personally announce your discovery, you tried to reach Colonel Bennett by telephone. But he was out. You wrote a message instead, sealed it, and instructed Sergeant Camel to deliver it directly to the Colonel's office. Then you went home. Anything wrong? Things have never been so right, believe me. Guess what, Dolly? I'm going to get a better job. Promotion. Oh, Miss, that's wonderful. Are you sure you aren't joking? I should say not. There's an opening, and Colonel Bennett told me this morning it would go to the man who finds the Heister Jewel. Oh, Vic, the whole unit's been on that project for months. How do you know you'll be the one to... Wait, wait, wait. Want to see something pretty? Look here. See this leather pouch? Now watch. There they are. The Heisler Jewel. Believe it or not, they were hidden in the fish pond. Thick. It's a beautiful. So think of it. Half a million dollars. Yeah, and I, I found them all by myself. Nobody else can claim any credit on that. Half a million dollars. It should be worth the promotion, shouldn't it? Wait. Wait a minute. You were alone when you found me. No one knows you have them. Right. It's my surprise for the colonel. Don't be an idiot. Don't you realize what we have right here in our hands? What's a measly little advancement compared to a, a fortune? But, Marcia, we've got to turn the jewels in. Why? You said you were alone. Nobody knows about them. We'd be rich, Victor. You can't turn them in. Yeah, I... I never even thought about it that way. You're right. Nobody knows we have them. Nobody. And we're going to keep them. All right. All right, Marsha. Marsha. Marsha, I forgot. What a fool. I wrote a message to that colonel. You what? Yes, yes. I said I found the jewel. And Sergeant Campbell delivered it just a few minutes ago. Colonel Bennett was out when I called, so... Victor, maybe he's still out. Maybe you can get it back. You've got to get it back. Do you hear? Okay, Marsha, okay. You wait here. If there's any chance at all, I'll get that message. Yes, Victor Wakeman. At that moment, you made a decision for evil. You went directly to headquarters and found that the colonel was still out. Unnoticed, you entered his office. And there on the colonel's desk, you saw the envelope with your message inside. You had picked it up when you heard the door opening behind you. You stuffed the message into your pocket and turned to face the intruder. Colonel Bennett. Well, hello, Wakeman. You want to see me? Oh, no, no, sir. I just stopped in to check the map. Anything new on the Heisler jewels, sir? No, nothing. That's a tough nut to crack. Well, it'll do us all good to forget it for the weekend. Suppose you and Marcia are going out to that picnic this afternoon? No, I... I think I'll stay in and check a couple of leads instead. But we'll be at your party tonight for sure, Colonel. I admire your spirit, Mr. Wakeman, but don't don't overdo it. You must think of Marcia, you know. Yes, I, I am. I am thinking of Marcia. As you left, you 
back at the colonel's office, Victor, with the message safely in your pocket. You were thinking of Marcia and the multitude of expensive things the fortune in jewels would buy. Marcia was waiting for you at home. Her face talked with anxiety as you walked in. Marcia, Marcia, I got it. I got the message. Was there any trouble, Victor? I mean... No, no, it was simple. And luck was really with us. The message was on the colonel's desk. I just got it into my pocket when he walked in. You're sure he's not suspicious? He doesn't suspect anything. Of course not. Why should he? And no one else does either. Hundreds of messages like this pass every day. It's routine. And the Heisler jewels are ours. No one will ever find them. Give me that message. I'll put it in the stove right now and burn it. Okay. Good. Good idea. Here. When this is going up in smoke, no one will... Vic? Vic, there's a time stamp on the back of this. Is that routine, too? What's that? A time stamp? Yes, it says, opened and resealed by duty officer. What? Let me see that. Good Lord. Opened and resealed by duty officer at 1131. Signed R.A. Mathis, Captain. Uh, what does that mean? When a message is received for the colonel, it's open, read, resealed, and stamped by the duty officer. Which means Captain Masters, whoever he is, knows that I found the Heisler's jewel. Oh, it's no. There's no doubt about it, Marcia. Captain Masters knows. What are we going to do? I don't know. Everyone will find out now. They'll all know what we tried to do. Maybe they know already. No. Wait a minute. Calm down, Marcia. This Masters must be one of the new intelligent officers from the state. He won't talk about it to anyone but the Colonel. Oh, that's even worse. But you've got to do something. You can't Shut let up, Marcia, find out. Wait a minute. I've got to think. We're in this too far to turn back now. Somehow I have to find a way out. Yes, Victor. Because of a little thing. Because you dropped your cigarette lighter, you were given an opportunity for success and happiness. But you made a decision for evil. And now, with your mind tormented by fear, you face another decision. Soon, Victor Whitman, I will write again on your page in the Diary of Fate. Before we continue our story, a few words on behalf of our sponsor. Yes, Victor Wakeman. Only moments ago, the theft of the Heisler jewels had seemed so simple. But now as you faced your wife and the realization that a Captain Masters knew of your decision for evil, your voice was edged with panic. You realize what this means, Marsha? I'm through. Disgraced. I'll be sent to prison. There must be a way out, Vic. There must be something you can do. Yes, there is something that I can do. And it's the only thing that will work. What is it? What are you thinking? The Captain Masters must be silent for good. Oh. No, Victor, not, not murder. Yes, murder. And the sooner the better. But I won't let you. I can't let you. Never mind that. I shouldn't have listened to you in the first place, but I did. So from here on out, you'll do exactly as I say. Now I'm going to call headquarters and locate Captain Masters. Got to call Masters? Yes. I've never met the Captain... It's a good idea to know something about the man you intended. Hello? May I speak to Captain Masters, please? Oh, I see. Yes. Yes, of course. The picnic. No. No message. Well, Marsha, it looks like we'll have to get to our swim pool. Why? Where are we going? To a picnic, my dear. A picnic with Captain Masters. Well, we'll be there soon, so now remember, Marsha, you're out for a good time and nothing more. Just relax. I'll do my best, Vic. 
But surely you're not going to do anything now. I mean, here in broad daylight. Of course not. But I have to know what Captain Masters looks like, and, well, he'll be here tonight. You see, Marcia, time is precious, too. There's no telling when Masters will say something to Colonel Bennett about the discovery of the jewel. Well, here we are. Look, Nick. Some of the people are leaving already. Yeah, so I see. Well, let's hope Masters is still around. Come on. Good afternoon, sir. The young lady has some refreshments. Huh? What's that? Oh, yes, we'll have some. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, tell me, waiter, you happen to know a Captain Masters? Captain Masters? Why, yes, sir. I was talking to the captain switch just a minute. Sir. Look, they're swimming near the edge of the lake. That's Captain Masters now. Now, Victor, you had located the one obstacle in your path. But you were anxious to get a good look at the officer who was swimming with an attractive blonde girl. And when the young couple left the water and laughingly started to climb the steep bank at the lake's edge, they casually strolled away from Marcia to within earshot. It was then that I, fate, again intervened. And another little thing happened. Come on now, Ruth. You gotta keep moving to get warm. Here, give me your hand. It's too steep for you. Oh, never mind. That stone, watch out. Oh, 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 Ruth, are you all right? Oh, yes, I guess I'm all right. Oh, I think, I think I twisted it some. Well, can you walk? Oh, yes, I can walk all right, but I'm afraid I won't be with my little Bennett's dance tonight. Dance? Tonight? Now, wait a minute, my dear cousin. Don't tell me you forgot about another one of our dates. <laughs> Frankly, yeah, but I wouldn't have been able to make it anyhow. I got to pick up some papers at headquarters in Zellendorf. Oh, this army... When? What time? At eight. Eight o'clock sharp. Yes, because of a little thing. A loose stone. You, Victor Wakeman, now knew where you could find Captain Masters. And an hour later, as you discussed the details of your plan with Marcia, you were confident. But, Vic, are you sure you'll be able to get to Masters at Zeelandor? I'm positive, Marcia. I've ridden with officer couriers on that same run a dozen times myself. You see, intelligence headquarters in Zellendorf are in the old Karlberger Castle, high on a hilltop. The road back to the highway is winding and dangerous. He'll have to drive slowly. But where were you thinking? Well, uh, there's a hairpin turn about a hundred yards from the base of the hill. You almost have to come to a full stop to renew it. Victor, I hope you know what you're doing. Don't worry about me, Masha. Just remember your part. You go to the colonel's party at 8.30 at Skip. And say that you'll be along in a matter of minutes. There was some work you had to finish. Exactly. Dear Colonel Bennett will approve of my industry, I'm sure. After all, I'll be working overtime. Now, Victor, you were certain of yourself. You left Marcia shortly after dinner and hurriedly drove the 15 miles to the Karl Booger Castle in Zeelendorf. It was half past seven when you parked in a clump of trees at the side of the road and unnoticed climbed the hundred yards to the hairpin turn in the winding castle road. Then as a summer storm broke overhead, you waited. At two minutes past eight, you heard a jeep motor approaching from the castle. You had to be certain that Captain Masters was the driver and was alone. As the vehicle slowed to make the hairpin turn, you stepped into the road and waved your arms. Stop! Stop! Hold on, I had stop! What's that? What'd you say? I said stop! What? Who are you? Me? That doesn't matter. The point is that you're Captain Masters. Victor, the explosions from the pistol in your hand and the sight of the lifeless form before you froze you to the spot on which you stood. But you soon gained control of yourself and confident that the sound of the shots 
had been lost in the storm, you drove back to Berlin. It was nine o'clock, and most of the guests had already arrived when you rang the bell at Colonel Bennett's quarters. Well, good evening, Mr. Wakeman. You're late. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. You see, Colonel Lyon. No, no, don't bother. I know exactly what happened. You found the Heisler jewels and decided to keep them yourself. Oh, you found What? Them. No, no, that, that's not so oh, No, I don't think it is, my boy. <laughs> now, relax and join in the fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Just a joke. Sorry, <laughs> Colonel Lyon. I guess I've been working a bit too hard lately. Well, forget it, Wakeman. Uh-oh, here's your wife. Maybe she can help you think about something besides the Heisler jewels. Hello, darling. Glad you weren't too late. I got here as soon as I could. Say, you look lovely, Marcia. Thank you, Vic. Of course, I worked hard at it. It isn't every night we poor civilians are invited to one of the colonel's parties, you know. And that's our loss, my dear. Since you do make such a pretty picture, I'd consider it an honor if you, too, would accept a last-minute invitation to dine at my table. Thank you, Colonel. We'd love to. It would be a pleasure. Good, sir. good. You see, one of my guests was called away at the last moment, and I'm short another, uh, Captain Masters. Captain but, Masters. But you don't think there's a chance that the captain will still show up? At this late hour? No, no, my boy. I don't think Captain Masters will be with us this evening. <laughs> Colonel's words were more than just conjecture to you, Victor. You thought again of the picnic and how lucky you were that the girl with the captain you killed had turned her ankle on a loose stone. For because of that little thing, you had learned everything you had to know. But Victor Wakeman, I fate arranged that little thing for a purpose. Soon you will learn that fate is not a conspirator in evil. Soon I will write a final entry under your name in the diary of fate. In just one moment, the exciting conclusion of the Victor Wakeman entry. But first, a word from our announcer. Yes, Victor Wakeman, with the captain dead, you no longer feared that your theft of the Heisler jewels might be discovered. And the next morning, as you entered your office at intelligence headquarters, you were at ease. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Wakeman. I got the jeep gas and ready to go. Where do we hunt today, hmm? Hunt? Hmm. Oh, oh yes, the Heisler jewels. Well, Sergeant... Huh? Uh, just a minute. Mr. Wakeman. This is Colonel Bennett, Wakeman. Can you come into my office, please? Yes, I'll be right there. Wait for me, Captain. Well, uh, I... I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. Okay, I'll go get them maps ready so we can start... Do you want to talk to me, Colonel? Yes, I do. I want to talk to you about the Heisler jewels. Sit down, Wakeman. The jewels? Well, what, what about them, sir? I want you to tell me what you've done with them. What, what I've done with them? But it, is this another joke, sir? Hardly. Where are the jewels, Wakeman? Oh, I don't know, sir. I have no idea. You're lying. And Captain Masters can prove it. Captain Masters? Well, what, what is Captain Masters to do with it? Everything. As duty officer here yesterday, the captain read your note to me about your discovery of the jewels. The note which you probably destroyed later when you decided to keep them yourself. No, no, you're lying. You're wrong. We'll see, Wakeman. We'll know in a minute. Will you come in here, please? Certainly, sir. Now, Captain... Did you or did you not open and read a message addressed to me that said Wakeman here had found the Heisler jewels? Yes, sir. I did read that message. What? No, no, she's lying. This this woman, Arthur, this captain... Wait a minute. You, that blonde hair. You were the one at the picnic yesterday. 
The one who was swimming with Captain Masters. No, Mr. Wakeman. That's not right. I was swimming with a captain named Johnson. You see, I'm Captain Masters. Captain Ruth Masters. Yes, Victor. In a single stunning instant, the whole truth smashed into your mind. And dazed by the realization that Captain Masters was an officer in the Women's Army Corps and not the captain you had murdered in Zeelendorf, you blurted out the whole truth and thus condemned yourself to death and your wife, Marsha, to life in prison. And now it is time to close the book. In the case of Victor Wakeman, as in the cases of all mortals, I, fate, am but the instrument of a plan. And the countless little things that happen are the tools with which I work. Because he dropped his cigarette lighter, Victor Wakeman found the Heisler jewels, which he and Marcia decided to keep. But because of another little thing, a loose stone, he overheard a conversation which led him to a fatal error. Heed well the moral, you who listen and remember. There is a page for you in the Diary of Fate. The cast of the Victor Wakeman entry included Herbert Lytton, Mary Lansing, Barney Phillips, Walter Craig... Ray Erlenborn, Gene Twombly, and Hal Sawyer. Diary of Fate 